Hello everyone, today I have some tips for NeoVim users to hopefully improve your workflow. Now this is not a video aimed at complete beginners. I'm kind of assuming that you have some of the basic motions down, but you want to take your workflow to the next level. And so today I'm gonna to be covering some things that I wish I knew when I first started using NeoVim that have really, really enhanced my editing experience. So my first tip is to stop using HJKNL so much. This can seem kind of weird if you're new to NeoVim and you've seen online that the big thing about NeoVim is instead of using arrow keys, you use HJKNL to move around. Um, but I'm trying to argue here that using HJKNL is actually not the best way to move around your code inside of NeoVim. Yes, it does have its use cases. Like if you want to move one character at a time, then it's okay to use it. But honestly speaking, I very rarely use any of those keys in my development workflow anymore. So for example, I'm in this random file here and I let's say I want to get to this uh, this argument end here. And so how could I do that? Well, if I use the HJKNL approach, I could just you know press J until I get to the line and then I could just hold down L until I make it all the way to end. Now that's really, really slow to be honest and it would be a lot better to actually just use my mouse and click there. That would actually be faster than that approach. And one of the philosophies behind NeoVim is that we have a very quick and precise editing experience. So if I'm able to just use a mouse and be there quicker, then something's obviously wrong here. So my first suggestion is to actually replace H and L with W, B and E. Um, and if you don't know what that is, W goes by word and stops at the beginning of a word. B goes backwards by word and stops at the beginning of the word. And E goes by word and stops at the end of the word. So now what I could do is I could press J to go to the line and then press W to go to end. Now it's still quite a bit of key presses, but I did get there a little bit quicker. Now we can take this a step further and use capital W, capital B, and capital E. The capital versions of these key maps are basically the same thing, but they treat a word as anything that isn't white space. So what I can do here is I can actually press capital W and it will actually go through this entire import vertex.zig right here, and it will simply go to the next word, which means that if I go to this line and I press capital W, I only had to press it like four or five times there to get to end. So we're already at a much better spot, but that's still not as efficient as it could be. So now we have to get into more precise searching mechanisms to actually get to the exact spot that we want. Um, first, I'm gonna cover the vanilla ones, and then I'm gonna cover a plugin that does make this a lot easier in, in, in your head at least. So the first one is to actually just search where you wanna go. So if I wanna go to this end argument, I can just type in end and there we go. I'm at end and I'm done. Now this is pretty good and I do use this a lot when I immediately can't think of a way to get to that keyword word, but it does have a couple downsides. One is that if I did have ends like all over my code base, then it would not work as well because I would actually have to like press N a couple times to go to the next appearance of end and that wouldn't be so good. So there's another way. So what you can actually do is you can you can find a unique character surrounding this uh, keyword here and you could actually go to that. So let's say I wanted to go to colon here. I could actually use F and then do colon and then press semicolon semicolon and now I'm there. Um, this could be pretty reliable if you're looking for an argument and you know you're looking for an argument. So you can press F and colon and then you're able to get over there. Um, but this again, you do have to press semicolon a couple of times, which can be a little bit cumbersome. So getting into third party plugins that do make this a little bit nicer, you could actually use something called flash.envim, uh, which allows you to actually teleport anywhere on the screen. I have mine set to ZK. And then if I press a character, as you can see, it pops up all of the possible characters here and gives me a jump list. Um, now, th there are quite a bit of E's in this file. So I do have to press one more character to actually narrow down the search a bit, and then I can press F to get to end. Now, in most situations, you won't have to press two characters. So like, let's say I wanted to go to this V over here, I could just press ZKVF to actually go to my character like that. So I do find this pretty convenient, uh, especially when I want to jump to some very specific spot in my code, like right here, for example. So that replaces H and L, but what about J and K? So J and K have a bit more use than H and L for me because um, there are definitely times where I just wanna go down one line and so pressing J or going up with K is actually pretty useful. But a lot of times I actually don't wanna go one line at a time and I'm generally at the spot that I wanna be or the spot that I wanna be is quite far away. Uh, for that, I can use Control D and Control U to actually go by half pages. And I have mine remap to auto center the screen after I go up and down. Those key maps are right here. They basically just add ZZ to the key map like that. So it just makes it a little bit less disorienting whenever you are going up and down the page. So I do highly recommend adding this key map to your configuration if you do use these two key bindings. 
There is also the option of using curly bracket and closing curly bracket to go by uh, text block. So I can go like this and I can jump around a function. And this is actually really useful for whenever you want to highlight a function. So you could just do like opening curly bracket, capital V, closing curly bracket. And now we have the entire thing highlighted. So I can then just like delete it or whatever I wanted to do there. But this can also be a little bit too undeterministic for me because, you know, if you're ever working in a code base with more than just yourself, everyone has a different way of coding. And that means that everyone either likes to put a lot of spaces everywhere or they don't like to put any spaces anywhere. Some people don't even put spaces between functions, which is absolutely criminal. Unless you have a very specific uh, strict design spec for your code base, it's kind of unreliable to use this. But it's still an option, especially if you are able to actually see where it's going to land here, then it is pretty useful to do that. The next thing is to get really good at motions like CIW, CAW, and VI quote. Those are just some examples, but they're basically examples of changing in some sort of block, um, selecting in some sort of block, or selecting and changing around a block. Um, and I think it's a little bit easier to explain if I actually just show you what I'm talking about. Um, so let's actually go to a block here. And what I could do is if I wanted to, let's say, change this block, I could actually do CIB, which is change in brackets and brackets here, meaning the parentheses. So I could do CIB. I could also do VIB if I want to highlight it and do something with that. Like I want to highlight all these arguments here. And I could also do CAB if I wanted to get rid of the parentheses altogether. Um, but the basic motion is the action you want to do. And then whether it's inside or around. So usually it's inside for me, which is CIB here. But if I do CAB again, it will delete the whole thing. And then the actual thing that you want to be around. So um, I could also do something like curly brackets. So I could be inside of this uh, function here and I could do VI curly bracket. And now the entire function is highlighted. Now, one really cool thing about this is that you actually don't have to be inside of that block in order to select it. And so this means that you can actually have some pretty powerful ways to move around your code. Let's say that my cursor is just like in this position here on a different line and I want to remove all these arguments here. Uh, what I can do is I can literally just do CIB and now I have not only jumped to the correct position, but I have also cleared out all the arguments. So I, I'm able to actually rapidly change that without having to first navigate inside of the scope and then changing it. So it just saves a couple extra key presses there. And if you work on adding the muscle memory for this, then you will get more and more used to doing these kind of things, which can be pretty cool. Same thing works for other things like curly brackets. So I could do like CI curly brackets and now I, I have cleared out the function and I'm in insert mode. So that's a pretty cool thing to do there. Another version of this kind of motion that is really, really useful is actually when in the context of words. So normally you can you know change a word by doing CW here, which will actually just take a word and it will change it. But the problem with this is like if you are in the middle of a word, like let's say I'm an allocator and I'm in like the middle of allocator and I do CW here, it will only change from my cursor to the end of the word, um, which honestly, I don't ever like I don't ever see myself using that, to be honest. I almost always just rewrite the entire word just because it's easier on the brain. Um, so for that, you would do CIW and that would allow you to actually change the entire word no matter what spot you're in. You could be all the way at the end of the word and still do CIW and still change the entire word like that. Same thing works for highlighting and you can do VAW to select it with the white space around it. Although to be honest, I don't really find myself using CIW or VAW too much. I usually stick to just CIW or DIW or VIW, but you know, it's there. So just, just to let you know. Now, the next step that I have is for replacements. So let's say that I'm writing something here and I just say like const foo equals like hello, but I forget that I am in a good language that doesn't allow me to write strings with single quotes. So normally I would have to actually like go here to my single quote and then do R double quote and then go to the single quote and then do R double quotes. And that would work. That's that's an okay way of doing it. But if you actually have some surround key map set up or you are using a surround plugin like I am, then you could do something like SR for surround, which is my thing, and then single quote and then um, double quote. And it will actually change that, which is some pretty cool stuff. Um, and this works for a lot of things. So I can actually do like SR curly bracket parentheses and that will change everything to parentheses. You can also surround things in visual mode with mini surround, which is what I'm using. So I could do like SA curly brackets and it will surround it in curly brackets. So one thing that I didn't know for an embarrassingly long time is that with a lot of these surround things, whenever you surround them, they add an extra space in the beginning and the end, which I did find a little bit annoying because usually I did not want that space. But if you're in the same situation as me where you don't want that space, if you do essay and use the closing one instead of the opening one, it will not have that space. So just letting you know if you happen to be in the same situation I'm in. Now, what's cool about this is that, you know, 
If you are actually like a front end developer and you're writing a lot of HTML, this also works with HTML. But let's say that I need to actually wrap it in another div. Normally what I can do is I can just create a new div above it and then just press enter and then go down two lines, delete that, go up two lines and paste it. And then it would auto format for me. This is okay, this is fine, but maybe there's a better way to do this. So what I could actually do to wrap this div is I could just select the div and then I could do um, SAT and then I could type in the you know tag that I want. So let's say I actually want to wrap it in a nav here. Then it will actually wrap it in a nav and I have it done in a couple less key presses. So I'm not a front end developer, but this is pretty useful for me whenever I do my minimal amount of HTML. So just you know letting you know that that exists. The next step that I have is to actually utilize the full potential of Telescope. So most people that I see that use NeoVim use Telescope, which if you don't know what it is, it's basically a fuzzy finder that you can use for searching for a list of things. And most people use it for just searching through different files. So I could jump to my image.zig here and I could be there and I could just like go to another thing here and go to my string.zig and you know do whatever I want to do like that. And that's great. Telescope is the superior way to quickly jump to a file. Uh, but that's not all that Telescope is. Telescope is a fuzzy finder and if you look at telescope if you actually go to the command and you just press tab here you'll see that we have a ton of built-ins we have auto commands buffers and color schemes and all these sort of things here that most people actually don't make use of and my recommendation is to use a couple more of these there's some fun ones like for example i have a key binding to you know search through different themes so maybe i want to change my theme to vague dot uh, nvim then i could actually change it here with a couple key presses but there's also some actually really really useful ones one of the most useful ones for me is actually fuzzy finding over document symbols. So I have mine mapped to space DS, and then that gives me all the different document symbols that I have here. So let's say I know that I have a setup method that I want to go to in this file. I could start typing in setup, and now I'm at my setup method here. So this provides a really, really powerful way to actually go through your code without having to you know, manually go up and down through the code, especially if the, if the file is pretty large. And what's also really cool is that if your window is big enough, you can actually see a preview of what you're about to jump to. So you can see like, okay, maybe that's not the correct function because I do have three functions named frame here um, so then we jump to the proper one and that's how I get there so another built-in that I really like is the ability to grep throughout my workspace so I can just type in anything like let's say I wanted to look for where I'm using square root um, here is going to show me every occurrence of where I use square root and again it does give you a little nice preview of where that is so you can check before you jump there so I do encourage you to explore the different built-ins for Telescope and like look at the options that you have for jumping around your code and making it a bit a bit quicker to go to places you want to go to. So now something that meshes really, really well with a Telescope that is a built-in inside of NeoVim is marks. Now marks are criminally underused in NeoVim. I don't see enough beginner tutorials talking about marks as extensively as they should because they're extremely useful. Let's say that I'm working on this game struct. So I go to my game struct here using my document symbols finder um, and then let's also say that like you know while I'm doing that I'm working on my setup method here and I'm working on my setup method and I'm adding some stuff and I realize oh I need to add something to my uh, game struct well how could I do that well the first thing I could do is I could just keep on typing back and forth here um, and just every time I want to go to the game, I just go back to my document symbols. But that means I have to type in the game every single time. I could also utilize flash.nvim to go to where my game is here inside of the function arguments and then press GD to go to definition. And then I'm inside of my game struct again. But again, that takes a little bit of mental overhead that I don't really like. I don't like having to use flash.nvim and rely on it so heavily for everything. Um, and I also don't like to have this sort of like it feels like kind of like a band-aid. It doesn't feel like a proper approach for this kind of thing. So instead what I would do is I would actually make a mark. And the way you do a mark is you just press M and then just a mark label. So I could do MA here. And then I would go to setup and I would make another mark and I would say like MS because they're right next to each other on the keyboard. And now what I can do is I can do single quote A, single quote S, single quote A, single quote S. And I can just basically teleport between these marks. And another cool thing is that if you forget your marks, you know, again, you know, emphasizing, you know, cementing that idea of looking at telescope and seeing all that it can do, you can actually telescope over all of your marks here. So as you can see, I just added these two marks, which are pretty useful. You know, you can take this a step further and actually do file marks, which are denoted by capital letters. So I could actually mark my main.zig file here by doing M capital A, and then I can go to image.zig and then mark this one with M capital S. And now if I do single quote capital A, it goes to main.zig, and I can do single quote capital S to go to image.zig. It basically gives you extreme teleportation abilities that are really, really useful whenever you are navigating a larger code base.
let's say I'm in a file and I want to create a new struct um, and I'm in zig. So I need to open up some space here and then I need to type in pub const um, foo equals struct open in curly brackets and then exit out of insert mode, add the semicolon here, go back up here, enter and enter in insert mode. Um, that's a little bit too cumbersome for me. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, so instead, what you could actually do is just use a snippet. If you haven't been making your own snippets, now is your invitation to make all of your snippets because they're really, really useful. I just quickly made this one while I was learning Zig and I was like, I don't want to type out all this stuff for a struct every single time. So I just do stra and it actually just creates this little um, template here. I can then do foo and I can press tab and I can say bar is i32 like this. That's pretty good stuff. And that was not a lot of code. So inside of my NeoVim configuration, I have a couple different files that I like to store snippets for. And I have a couple others here that are just like not yet organized in this way. But here is my zig.lua. And I just created a very simple snippet here, um, which I use lua snip for, which is probably what you're using if you use any sort of tutorial for setting up your NeoVim configuration, or you're using, I think LazyVim uses lua snip as well. So you're all set there. And all this is really saying is whenever I type in stru in a zig file, I want to insert const and a space here. And then I want to go into insert mode and I want to, and this would be like the, um, the like default text. I don't want default text. I don't like default text. I like it to just be empty. So I, I leave this as empty strings. And then after that, it's going to assign, it's going to insert equal struct here and then um, go to a new line and tab over. Then we have our second input uh, spot here, which is just again, empty here because I don't like those previews. And then at the end, we add that, that closing curly bracket and semicolon. This can be really, really useful, especially if you're doing things like LaTeX, where there are a lot of very verbose things that you can do. So I have some things here to generate some stuff that I don't really like typing out every single time. Um, it's by it's you know by no means like the best set of uh, snippets ever, but I just make some for my own specific use cases. And actually adding them to your completion engine is really, really easy. Uh, whenever you are actually setting up your Lua snip, all you have to do is add snippets and then give it a file that returns a table of snippets and it will automatically insert them into any file that you use. So that's all I'm doing here. And it honestly is a big game changer for me. And my last tip is to make some utilities for yourself and make some actual plugins that you will use in your setup. So no one knows you better than you know you. And since NeoVim is such a highly customizable editor, it gives you the opportunity to make things as exactly to your specifications as you want. Um, now it's important to understand that making plugins in NeoVim is extremely easy. It's not some mystical thing that only experienced NeoVim users can do. Um, and that's by design. NeoVim picked Lua as its configuration language because it's more accessible to actually create things than in Vim script. Um, and what that allows you to do is actually write quick little things to improve your own workflow. So for example, I wrote a little thing that gives me a pop-up to-do list from wherever I am inside of my code base. So I have here, I just have like a to-do list and I can just mark this with an X and save it and then exit out. And I can just do this from wherever I am in the world. I can just open it up here. And as you can see, it's right there. Good stuff. And I think that's really the final step of like truly optimizing your setup is making things extremely personal and making it as specifically curated to your setup as you possibly can. So find those things that you're like, man, I wish I had this and there isn't really a plugin that fits this exact need. And then just write it yourself. I promise you, it's not as hard as you may think it is. And it's honestly a lot easier than writing an extension of VS Code too, by the way. So with that being said, that about covers all of the major tips that I wanted to give in today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found something useful. Um, if you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Also consider joining my Discord server where there are a ton of awesome people that would love to talk to you, answer your questions, and maybe collaborate on some things together. So it's a great place, come and check it out. Also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, see ya.